So on today's video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to uh, get filament back into your mantis after uh, a couple of different things happen. So uh, the first scenario that we're going to cover is if you <coughs> did what I did this morning and ran out of filament. Um, and this is one situation where you're going to have to use OctoPrint to uh, take care of the problem. The other situation would be if your filament snapped, which does sometimes happen. Um, I recently had a roll of Overture that just for some reason had a bunch of breaks throughout the roll. And every time the filament snapped, this issue happened. And the issue is that the gears right here are constantly pulling the filament up through the, the tiny hole in the bottom. When you run out of filament or when the filament itself uh, snaps, that filament will head up until it hits the top of the gears and then the gears have nothing else to push. So now you end up with a Bowden tube. This is a Bowden tube, the white tube here. You end up with a tube full of filament, but you can't get it back out because there's nothing here to grab and you can't push it through because there's nothing there to push. Um, in this case, what you are going to want to do is head into OctoPrint and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So here we are in uh, Mantis interface. We're going to go ahead and click on the advanced features menu to the right hand side here. Click on Octoprint. Carefully read the warnings and if you agree, accept. Now once uh, Octoprint goes ahead and loads up our printer, you'll notice that this uh, window here will change. It will now be showing the actual temperatures that are present on the machine. Um, and I was just uh, running this printer, which is why it was higher and is now dropping, but it's back down to you know, pretty much a, a baseline temperature now. What you're gonna do is click on the down arrow here. And depending on the version of the software that you have, uh, this will either say set ABS 210 and set PLA 180, or it will say, uh, I believe, Overture PLA 205 and generic PLA 180. Uh, but either way, uh, the 210 or the 205 is perfectly fine. When you click on this, you'll notice that um, there's a red line that appears right here on the right-hand side of the screen. As the time starts to roll, you'll see that the uh, the paler of the, the red line, this is the uh, temperature that we're trying to get to, all the way up here to, in my case, 210, in your case, possibly 205. And then the darker red line is actually showing how the temperature is uh, increasing. It'll take about two minutes for this to get up to uh, the correct temperature. And once it does, then we'll go ahead and step behind the mantis and go ahead and finish up our filament issues. Okay, so OctoPrint's got us all heated up to the correct temperature. Uh, currently my hot end's at 205, so I'm gonna make sure I do not touch that. Um, you can take off your old rule roll and uh, do whatever you want with them. If you actually go on Thingiverse, there are some people who have created uh, little nifty designs that you can print, 3D print and put in there to make like a little chest of drawers that go all the way around the outside. I've seen a bunch of different uh, kind of uh, repurposings of the, the roll, but it's up to you. Or you can throw it out or recycle it, uh, completely whatever makes you happy. Um, so, you'll notice that on this roll, the uh, Overture sticker does not face out. They roll these both ways at the Overture factory. So sometimes it's the sticker out, sometimes it's not the sticker out. It really does not make a difference. But actually, let me do this for this one for a second. So you put your uh, roll on the spool so that it is free spinning. And now, here's where one of two things has to happen. Because we still have filament all the way through here, we can press down on the pneumatic coupling and take this piece off and physically remove the filament this way because now it's hot enough that we can pull it out. Or we could also, if you, because sometimes it is really difficult to get these pneumatic fittings off of here. Let me just go ahead and get that out. Say that that pneumatic fitting was stuck and you just, for the life of you, you can't get it out. You could take a pair of slip grip pliers and just very simply unscrew this piece Bump, 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 and then pull it from there. But say you don't have a pair of slip grips and whatever, you don't want to take the, uh, that off. That's perfectly okay too. What I've just showed you is the way that I always do it, but this is an alternative method. So what you could do, since this is hot, 
And if we apply any pressure up through here, filament will start to extrude from the other side. You can actually go ahead and put in your new filament. And I'll also tell you that sometimes, you ha there we go. There's a little lip right down in the bottom of here and sometimes the filament will get snagged on it. Um, just keep kind of wiggling it around in there until you get it. It doesn't take a ton of pressure upwards. You just kind of got to move it uh, and sometimes it even helps to like take the very tip of the filament and bend it back a little get, bit just try to try and get it as straight as humanly possible just so that it goes right up in there. There we go. And up in there. So now picture that this thing is still full of filament. I start shoving the filament up in here and I'm going to be pushing that piece of filament through here and filament will be extruding from my hot end. Keep doing that until you get about that much filament up into your tube. And remember, this is only if you don't want to take this off or if the pneumatic fitting itself is not uh, popping out when you want it to. If you're stuck with everything else, you can do it this way where you just feed it straight up through and apply pressure and you'll be able to see there will be a little gap there. And if you don't see the gap, you can always, you know, move it back and forth so you see where you're at. And then you'll be able to push that remaining filament that was in here all the way through until you get two inches worth of material up in there. The reason we have to go this high is because uh, on every layer, these gears actually work in the opposite. They retract the filament out so that there isn't any additional oozing of filament onto the part that you're trying to print. So if you only had that much there, and if the first thing that your uh, printer did was to print a very short line and then retract, it could actually retract the filaments completely out of the gears, which would destroy what we're trying to do. So you lift up, get about two inches of filament up in there, and now you're totally fine. Now, if we did what I did, which was to take this piece of filament out, we want to keep holding up here, and you just want to keep feeding the filament in there until you can't feed it anymore. And you'll, he you'll, you'll feel when it starts to get some resistance, and that's the point at which we want to let it stop. So there's two different ways for you to be able to uh, swap out the filaments on your Mantis. And just so you understand the, the last and, I guess, you know, third technique would be if, uh, like in the case of you putting brand new filaments on here with nothing in the Bowden tube, it's the exact same process I just showed you. At that point, you don't even need to heat up the, uh, the hot end. You would just pick up on this lever, feed the filament through, feed it all the way to the top until it stops, and then your printer is ready to go ahead and keep printing. The thing that I want to show you is just uh, when you are done, filament's all set, you're ready to, you know, start another print or ready to, you know, just have your filament loaded and, and uh, not start another print. What you want to do is just come back in here, click on that arrow, and click off, okay? That'll automatically drop the temperature on your hot end back down to, uh, to room temperature. Um, if you forgot to do this, uh, it's not the absolute end of the world, but uh, you don't want to leave your hot end at temperature you know, forever. It's designed to stay at temperature for a really long time because obviously we can print for you know, days and days and days on end. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're not using your printer, there's no need to uh, be uh, using up the extra electricity. Plus, obviously, a hot end that's holding at 210 or 205 degrees could definitely burn somebody if they walked by and touched it. So when you're all done, if you manually heated it up, make sure that you take the time to manually cool it back off. And once those bolts stay off, you'll see that this, uh, the, the pale red line dropped all the way back down to zero. And now your uh, temperature readings are going to continue to travel down all the way to uh, room temperature again. Okay. All right. I hope that helped you out. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out.